Thank you for joining us for Discover NAU. I am grateful for this opportunity to speak with you about becoming part of the Lumberjack family. As you explore educational opportunities, we recognize that you have many choices. And so I want to thank you for considering NAU. Our number one focus is on your success. We offer a unique educational experience centered on your individual passions, ambitions, and preferences. At NAU, you are part of a close-knit community that provides academic and social experiences that will help you discover who you are and what direction you want your life to take. You will also enjoy the beauty of this region and the community of Flagstaff, ranked as one of the top college towns in the country with a great quality of life. We hope that what you learn today will inspire you to bring your aspirations to NAU. Enjoy today's program and go Lumberjacks. Good morning and welcome to Discover NAU. Thanks for taking some time out of uh, your day to learn a little bit more about Northern Arizona University. My name is Chad Eikhoff and I serve as Director of Admissions here at NAU and I'm joined by my colleague Annika. Thanks, Chad. Good morning, everyone. My name is Annika Olson, and I serve as the Vice President for Enrollment Management here at Northern Arizona University. I also often share with people that I have the best job on campus because I get to work with students and their parents and family members to determine if NAU is the right fit for them. We're excited you've chosen to join us today. Before we jump in talking about fit and if NAU may be right for you, we did want to touch on health and safety on campus and how we've ensured our students, faculty, and staff safety during this unprecedented health crisis, the pandemic that we're all still um, living through. One of the best ways to, to really understand um, is our NAU Go app, and you'll see that listed there in the bullets on the left-hand side of your screen. That app is where our students complete their daily health check, as well as can understand and link to ordering food through one of our robots on campus, or understanding the capacity in some of the dining facilities in that very moment if they're considering going. We've changed how we've delivered um, our academic offerings through the use of our NAU Flex technology stack. So some students are joining in person, some um, remotely or some mix thereof, um, but all are getting that world-class education from our amazing faculty. So some of just of the few steps that we've taken to ensure faculty and staff are, and students are, are safe on campus. Another key part of that has been our mitigation testing. So each week we um, test upwards of 2,500 faculty, staff, and students that are randomly selected to get tested so we can make sure that we're heading off any infections here on campus. And, and that has been quite successful. Mask wearing, and I, I think I already um, mentioned um, physical distancing as well. Um, and really just lumberjacks taking care of lumberjacks has, has really proven to be effective in our community and um, mitigating some um, of the risk associated with COVID. We're really proud of that. Absolutely, and I will say a lot of the images you may see and videos you'll see today throughout our presentation, uh, many of those were taken prior to the pandemic. So if you see uh, people not social distancing or not wearing masks, uh, we want to show you what some normalcy looks like on campus uh, from before the pandemic, and hopefully we'll be back to that within short order as well, too. Um, but if you did set foot on campus now, certainly you would see the mask wearing and the social distancing uh, happening throughout campus. Annika mentioned three different kinds, or mentioned fit, mm -hmm. and I'm going to kind of put out there three different kinds of fit that students and families should be looking for when they're choosing uh, a college, whether it be NAU or another institution. Really, those three kinds of fit are going to be academic fit, which we're going to start off talking about, followed by social fit, and then lastly, financial fit. Those are kind of the three kinds of fit. So diving into academic fit, you can see some of the key numbers there on the screen uh, in terms of average class size, student to faculty ratio. Um, you can also see that we've got about 100 different degree programs to choose from. So pretty much anything you can think of. Chances are if you came here and then changed your mind, uh, we'd probably have it as well. Um, and 
We're gonna talk about eight of those nine different academic colleges. So you saw there was nine different academic colleges. The one we're not gonna talk about is our graduate college. However, I do wanna make a nod to it and a mention to it uh, that we do have about 60 different master's programs and 15 doctoral programs. And some opportunities that we have um, are for accelerated programs actually. So if you're a motivated student, you could finish your undergraduate degree and a master's degree in as little as five years. So four plus one or a three plus two program uh, to crank up that master's degree a little faster. For a full list of those accelerated programs, go to nau.edu slash accelerated. Now we're gonna jump into uh, eight different colleges mm -hmm. and give kind of a, a quick overview um, of them and then have the opportunity to hear from a student. And first of all, we've got our College of Arts and Letters. Great, so as Chad mentioned, the first college we're gonna talk about is the College of Arts and Letters. And Cal, as we like to call it for short, houses the traditional college majors from philosophy, history, and English to comparative cultural studies as well. Cal also houses our performing arts, so art, music, and theater. And one of the things that has struck me during the pandemic has been the desire and will of students to still perform, whether that's um, a, on a live stream, in a Zoom meeting, or even outside on campus. I've walked by and seen our ensembles performing, so that's been Great to see all of that still occurring, but don't take my word from it. Let's hear from Abby, a Cal student. In the College of Arts and Letters, specifically being a music education major, you have a lot of opportunities to be in music ensembles, and that would include orchestra, band, and choirs. And something really cool about that is if you audition, you can get a lot of scholarship money for just being in them. Thank you, Abby. Next up, our College of Education. And back when NAU was founded in 1899, we were a teacher's college and still certainly a, a point of pride and an emphasis uh, for us here at NAU, really focusing on getting students in the classroom uh, early on and working with students early on within their undergraduate career uh, here at NAU. Uh, we do have CAPE accreditation. We are the only institution in the state of Arizona with CAPE accreditation and that uh, prestigious accreditation is something that we're proud of. Uh, now we want to hear from one of our students uh, who's in the College of Education, uh, Cameron. So the first thing I did was I joined an intramural soccer team because um, I played soccer since I was three years old, um, played competitively in high school, and I wanted to keep that going. I wanted to stay fit in a way that I enjoyed, and that is soccer. Up here, everybody wants to learn. Everybody is excited to learn what they're studying and then it's just a whole different atmosphere because people can just dive deep into their studies and be passionate about what they're doing um, because they're choosing their path, they're choosing what's gonna happen for them down the road, um, and it just makes the environment completely different. So I am an elementary education major with a concentration in foreign language, and my biggest goal in life is to make an impact, and I think teachers are some of the most influential people in a child's life, and they really do make that impact. Um, and in the terms of going into foreign language, uh, when you work in underprivileged schools, a lot of parents um, from Spanish-speaking homes cannot speak English, so having that second language is going to be really beneficial when it comes to parent-teacher conferences and things like that. And not only can I make an impact on the students, I can make an impact on their parents too. So I'm taking a class right now, ESC 280, which is um, a class that talks about um, students with special needs. And I grew up with a cousin who had Down syndrome, um, and he was like my best friend growing up. So learning how to work with those kids in schools is gonna be really eye-opening to me because I know how to do it on a social aspect, um, and it might be different because he's family, but learning how to do that on a professional kind of level is gonna be really important for me, and I'm really excited to get into my practicum next semester um, or next year, and I just, I can't wait to like put everything I'm learning into like action and see if this really is the right fit for me. Welcome back. Next is our College of Engineering, Informatics, and Applied Sciences. I always Ki have to- Kiosk, right? We try to- Ki Yes, yeah. <laughs> Kiosk is, is, is the short version of that. It's kind of a tongue twister to it say is. all together. But this college houses um, many engineering programs, six collaborative research centers and, and institutes. And I was speaking with the Dean of the Engineering Informatics and Applied Sciences College a few weeks ago, and he shared with me something I was unaware of. 
that nearly 50% of the senior capstone projects that happen in this college are sponsored by industry. So what that means is that students are getting practical experience from day one in this college and, and, and is, is at the end of their career here, right before they graduate, have direct interaction with sponsors from industry, which I just thought was so very, very exciting. And that the really the immediate impact that these majors have on, on our daily lives is, is just truly amazing. But don't take it from me. Let's hear from Cato to hear, uh, and hear some more about his experience here. Hi there, my name is Cato with the College of Engineering, Informatics, and Applied Sciences. Most of the programs within this college are ABET accredited, um, so the curriculum itself is very hands-on. The professors are very engaging with their students, and you can tell that they want them to succeed. Um, I'm just very blessed to be a part of such a great college. Thank you, Cato. I always love his energy. He's one of our ambassadors in our office. And uh, if you have the opportunity to, to meet him on a tour someday or uh, meet him at orientation, uh, certainly love uh, Cato's energy. Uh, next up, our College of the Environment, Forestry, and Natural Sciences, CEFINS. Right, Another the, tongue twister. Yep, the, the acronym we could try to uh, narrow that down to. Uh, our forestry program is located there, and NAU does own a large forest um, of their own where our students are out there getting that hands-on practical research uh, experience uh, within our forest. Uh, also the only forestry program in the state of Arizona, perhaps the only forest as well <laughs> uh, too. Um, and our dark skies, which I'll talk about a little bit later when I talk about Flagstaff, um, our astronomy students are getting experience uh, looking at our beautiful night skies and telescopes here on campus and then some uh, telescopes located through the region as well. We want to have the opportunity to hear from one of our students again. We're going to hear from uh, Danielle, a biomed major. College, the College of Health and Human Services, is at the forefront of our recent and ongoing health crisis. The students here have gotten an experience that maybe they didn't think they were going to receive um, when they applied. That Health and Human Services Colleges is home to our two competitive programs, our School of Nursing and Dental Hygiene, as well as a host of other popular programs. It's been exciting to work alongside some of our HHS or Health and Human Services students as they've helped us 
staff our mitigation testing center and hopefully soon our vaccine clinic as well. Exciting to be there as they're gaining some of that hands-on experiences. But don't take it from me, let's hear from Alyssa to share more. I knew you made me feel really at home whenever I connected with this girl down my hall. We were both living in McConnell at the time and she was like two doors away from me and we had a um, hall like dinner at the Dubai Center. So we all went and she was wearing a cheer jacket, like a, her old a high school cheer jacket. And I was like, oh my God, I cheered. And she was like, I cheered. And so then we connected off of, we both cheered. And we established like a friendship. We were both kind of like scared to go out of our comfort zone and scared to meet new people, but we encouraged Encourage each other to like go and find new friends and go sit next to people and go to like SI sessions and um, go to the running of the freshmen, which is really fun. I remember me and her both um, were super nervous because we were not ready to run a football field. I feel like the adrenaline rush of just sitting down in the stands and like feeling like this is what a college football game feels like and like kind of feeling like this is NAU. This is going to be where I'm living for the next four years. So I think at that moment it was like very breathtaking for me. The class that I took that really intrigued me into public health and why I wanted to go this direction was um, Anatomy 202 and that's the physiology of the human body. So the digestive system, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, and I was just so intrigued by like all of our systems in our body and how they connect and work as one. Um, and it just intrigued me to be like all of our body works in different ways and no one's going to be the same. Like all of our bodies are different. Um, but we have one core function, like the cardiovascular systems pretty much similar to everyone. Um, I don't know, I just like, NEU just has like this special like feel to it. Like everywhere I go on campus, like I can feel like I'm connected to someone. If it's like the Chick-fil-A worker or like <laughs> um, walking into like the math lab, like I feel like they're eager that I'm there and that like, how can I help you or that kind of feel. Thank you for that video. And I also wanna say thank you to our healthcare, hero, healthcare heroes as well too, uh, helping us through this pandemic. Um, and certainly many more uh, will be alum of the College of Health and Human Services. Uh, next up, our College of Social and Behavioral Sciences, SBS. A lot of the very people-focused majors, psychology, sociology, anthropology. Um, also, our School of Communication falls under the umbrella of the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences and opportunities for student-run newspapers, student-run radio, uh, the opportunity to get involved with television uh, through NAU TV, and we're in a NAU TV studio right now um, as we film this. We also have um, a state-of-the-art virtual reality lab uh, where our students are getting opportunities uh, with virtual reality. And I know our eSports team, which we're not talking clubs and social scene now, um, but I know they utilize that virtual reality space um, as well. We want to hear from uh, one of our communications uh, majors, Carrington. So let's, uh, let's give it a listen. When I started applying for colleges, I was set on staying in California. And my aunt was like, oh, you should check out this school called NAU. I looked at the website and I automatically fell in love with the school based on the website. I don't know what it was, but I signed up for a tour and I came to visit the school and that just made me wanna come here even more. And yeah, I came to NAU. So originally I was a public health major. I ended up switching to comm and that was the perfect major for me because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have found my internship, which I love. I interned with NAU Social and it's basically, we help run as interns the social media for the school. And we get to go to a lot of events and we get to get content. And sometimes I get to write blogs, which is fun. That's my favorite part. And we just, it's a little family that I got on campus. So definitely don't limit yourself. Um, if anything, like even if you're like me, set on not, or if you were like me, set on not going to school out of state, at least apply, because you never know, you could change your mind. And also, when you do get to school, to just enjoy every minute of it, because it does go by really fast. Great, that was great to hear from Carrington.
Next is the W.A. Frankie College of Business, also home to our world-renowned School of Hotel and Restaurant Management. Students that are attracted to this college have a work ethic like you've never seen. When I spoke with the dean also a couple of weeks ago, he could not stop talking about the incredible work ethic and drive of the students in this college, which is no surprise being a, a school of business, but also what's unique is that they really work alongside their faculty members with their business plans and their coursework to, to ensure their success. Again, let's hear from AJ, one of our business students. I actually got into rock climbing through NAU. I took this wilderness welcome rock climbing trip where they took us around and they had us climb outdoors with ropes and without and they taught us everything there was to know about climbing. Just absolutely fell in love with the sport of rock climbing and so I got a membership to a bouldering gym off campus and I've climbed there for three years now and it's just been my hobby. I've absolutely loved my almost four years in the College of Business so far. I think the business ones specifically promote an environment of professionalism, which is very helpful in the field of business. My favorite class in my major was Management 340, which was titled Business Ethics. I just found it fascinating how they were able to combine a business class with a philosophy class and it was a class that was almost completely based on discussion because there was no right answer to some situations so it was just kind of getting to the resolution of what would be the best for most people and that's what you'd have to do as a manager is kind of have to look out for your team and your company as a whole and I think it's good to practice those. It's just so much fun being around the same people and getting to know them and knowing that you're all striving towards the same goal. Thank you AJ. Last but not least our Honors College and rather than hear me talk about it I want to throw it to Dean Gustafson, the Dean of the Honors College. So let's take a listen. Hi, my name is Kevin Gustafson. I'm the Dean of the NAU Honors College, and I'm here to invite you to a great academic opportunity here at Northern Arizona University. The NAU Honors College is the small college experience in the middle of a big, bustling research university. Two main features distinguish our innovative curriculum. One is our approach to liberal studies or general education requirements. Instead of taking large introductory lecture courses in various disciplines, students in the Honors College earn liberal studies credits through taking small, discussion-based interdisciplinary seminars on topics ranging from mystery of the brain to culture, race, and democracy to Harry Potter to Game of Thrones. All students at NAU take a three-credit capstone in their major. Honors students take a six-credit capstone and we encourage students to really think outside the box, to use these projects to meet a specific personal, academic, or professional goal. Some students will do work in their major, other students do something completely different. They may be an engineer by training, but they have a passion for painting. It's a chance for honors students to have a truly individualized educational experience, one that is geared to meeting their personal, professional, or academic goals. The other pride of the Honors College is our brand new living learning community, which opened in August of 2018. The Honors Residential College has, on the academic side, has seven state-of-the-art classrooms. It has honors advising, a writing center, faculty office, administrative offices, all the things you need to have a truly supportive academic community. The residential side has housing for 620 students with two different types of rooms. A standard double room has two beds, two workspaces, but each double room has its own bathroom in it. The other floor plan has two entrances, two single rooms with a shared bathroom in between. So if you are the kind of student who appreciates small classes with invigorating discussions, who wants a truly individualized educational experience, who appreciates being pushed but also supported as you meet your personal and professional ambitions, then I hope you'll join us at the ANU Honors College. Thank you.
Thank you, Dean Gustafson. Uh, so studying abroad is the next thing we're going to talk about, and it's certainly a regret of mine personally that I did not take advantage of study abroad opportunities uh, when I was in college. And NAU does a great job with study abroad, so really encourage folks to take advantage of one of those opportunities. We have opportunities all around the world. Um, and I do want to call out specifically our interdisciplinary global program. What that is, it's a, a, a five-year program, and one of those years you spend abroad and you end up with two degrees. So it could be a, a language, so maybe Spanish and a business degree, and one of those years could be spent abroad in the country of Spain, uh, immersing yourself in the culture and the language. Uh, partly because of the interdisciplinary global program, NAU actually ranks seventh in the nation in terms of total number of students taking advantage of a year-long study abroad uh, opportunity. So NAU does a great job with that, and I'm certainly looking forward to uh, post-pandemic having these ramp up again uh, and have that opportunity for our students to travel around the world. If going abroad to another country is maybe a little more than you're looking for, we do have our national student exchange where students can go to another institution uh, within the United States or Canada, and maybe they could check out a, a potential grad school they're, they're thinking about going to, um, or maybe a city they're looking at living in uh, post-graduation, um, and, and check out one of those. Or maybe marine biology and go, go live by an ocean um, at an institution uh, for a semester uh, could be an opportunity there. Uh, next up, I wanna show you a video um, and I know I certainly have the travel bug for <laughs> post-pandemic. Um, and this will certainly give you the travel bug as well, too. So let's take a look. Food has a story. It has a sense of place. You taste the land, the weather, the people, their way of life. NAU's Discovering Gastronomy is a study abroad program. We were in France learning from industry experts the love and the compassion that people have going into the food. Seeing it from their side, they value it so much. It's really about knowing everything you can about your food. It really made me realize how much beauty there is in food. They learn people are really what kind of connect that story about food, and that brings them to a new level of understanding and perspective that they can bring back to employers. It's changed my world, honestly, and I'm looking at things in a new way. Food is the story of who we are, and I can't wait to show the world who I am. One of the things that by the time you start your first term here at NAU, you'll probably be almost tired of hearing, but our number one concern is your success as a student. We wanna make sure before, during, and even after you graduate, you are successful. And here are a number of different ways we help to ensure that success from our academic success center, free tutoring, and even career advice, before, during, and after your time as a student through our handshake portal, you can help, con it will help connect you with jobs and um, career advice and resume brushing up and, and all of that. In the classroom, that Lumberjack Mathematics Center as well as supplemental instruction is key. So, if you are needing help, please reach out, but don't worry, we'll be reaching out to you as well to make sure you have the support you need to be successful as a student here. I would like to turn it over to a number of our different amazing faculty members to talk a little bit more. Let's take a look. Some general advice for students, don't obsess about your grades. Uh, your grades do not define who you are. Uh, instead, Maybe obsess about learning how to learn. If you can develop that, the grades will come, but the grades do not define who you are. One piece of advice that I could give to NAU students to be successful would be to learn what an informational interview is and to conduct as many of those as you possibly can. An informational interview lets you meet with experts and with newer colleagues in the field that you're trying to go into and learn how they got there and what makes them successful. When we kicked off the day, we talked about three different kinds of fit. Academic fit, which we've touched on largely so far up to this point. We're gonna kind of transition to the social fit before wrapping up with the financial fit. 
And I think one of the biggest parts of the social fit is the city you live in, right? And the community that you're a part of. And Flagstaff is certainly a spot I feel fortunate to have called home for the last 13 years, uh, originally from Minnesota. Um, so a transition out to Arizona. Uh, we do have all four seasons here, which for those of you not from Arizona might not realize that. I know myself uh, coming from Minnesota, I thought desert, cactus, hot were kind of things I would think of uh, to describe uh, Arizona. But Flagstaff, we're at 7,000 feet elevation. Uh, so we're getting all four seasons, one of the top 10 snowiest cities in the country, but also one of the top 10 sunniest cities in the country. So diff different than that Minnesota winter I grew up with, uh, with all the sunshine um, and, and not the gray skies uh, that I grew up with. Uh, certainly a college town, and ranked one of the best college towns in the country. I mentioned earlier that idea around dark skies. Uh, Flagstaff was Arizona, or was the world's first dark sky city. Um, and we've got kind of ordinances around light pollution, uh, lights need to be pointed downward, businesses turn their lights off at night. And the Huffington Post recognized that and, and they named uh, Flagstaff the best city in the world for stargazing. And a point of pride for us here in Flagstaff is Pluto was actually discovered at Lowell Observatory about a mile from campus. Uh, still a planet in our hearts. We're gonna yes, keep, it is. keep holding on to that one uh, as Flagstaff residents. So looking a little broader and zooming out from Flagstaff, uh, Northern Arizona is certainly something that you should explore while being a student here at NAU. Uh, vibrant arts and cultural scene, uh, winter sports, uh, so if skiing, snowboarding is something of interest, uh, we certainly have that for you. And national parks, monuments, uh, just a short drive here uh, from campus. Uh, the beautiful Red Rocks of Sedona, absolutely love having the Grand Canyon in our backyard. Just on a whim, you can wake up on a Saturday morning and, and make a trip to one of the seven wonders of the world where people from all around the world are traveling uh, to see it and it is right here in our backyard. And closer right in our backyard is that Flagstaff Urban Trail System, mm -hmm. um, that opportunity to just get out and explore on a bike, um, on foot, and certainly in the pandemic times, I've been walking around and exploring all the, the urban trails uh, in my neighborhood and throughout the community. And certainly with all these great things in our backyard, uh, the classroom experience and the recreational experience of our students utilize those spaces. And we're gonna take a look at uh, Chocolate Falls, uh, a video of Chocolate Falls, just a short- My favorite uh, name. Drive from campus, yes, <laughs> exactly. I, I love my chocolate too, so <laughs> let's take a look. Exploration is traveling to a place to learn about it. Here in Northern Arizona, you can find places that take your breath away. These NAU hikes give me a sense of discovery of a place where I belong. Find your place at Northern Arizona University. Certainly the city is a big part of that social experience, but also so is your living environment. And that's where our housing and residence life team comes in. In a typical year, nearly 90% of our first year students choose to live on campus, although we don't require it. There is a two-step application process and we will place you by residential college. So you will live with other students that are in your same college. So if you're a college of business, major or an HRM major, you'll be living in the same residence hall. We find that student success is much higher when we do that. Natural study groups form and easy access to professors who sometimes come to the halls to, to make sure everything's going well in their particular class. So, so lots of opportunity there. And one of the greatest parts when you come to join us for a campus visit this DNAU or a campus tour is seeing the inside of a residence hall room. And we know we're not in a position to do that, but don't worry, we did have one of our team members do a tour for you and video that of the showroom. So let's go ahead and take a look. Hi guys, I'm Carolina. I'm a senior here at NEU. My major is Communication Science and Disorders. Um, I'm gonna be a third year RA in Gabaldon next year. So today I'm just gonna be taking you on a room tour. Cool, so to start off, we're gonna start talking about the beds here. Um, all of the beds are loftable and bunkable and you can adjust them um, for storage. So it takes about three, um, two or three people to adjust the bed, just so you're aware. Moving on, um, each student in this space has their own desk and then they also have their own drawer space in the room, <laughs> as you can see. 
So each room comes with their own closets um, for each student, so there's a lot of space for um, clothing and other valuables. Um, so each room also comes with their own fridge. Um, it's pretty spacious, so just like be courteous to your roommate and just talk about that things, communicate. Any has their own virtual reality that you can go on to the NEU website. Um, it's very specific to the room that you're staying in, so just go look that up to see kind of like how your room is set up and then you'll be ready for move-in day. So now you see what the inside of a typical residence hall room looks like, but don't fear. You notice there was a glass door on that hall room. That's our showroom to show guests as they're coming to campus. Your room will not have a glass door on it. So good, just good so clarification. Don't, yeah, yes, I just yes. I just wanted to be crystal clear <laughs> about that piece. Now, as the mom of two teenagers, I know the next topic is a hot topic, and that is eating and dining on campus. We have over 24, 25 different retail locations from Starbucks to Einstein's to Chick-fil-A on campus. And if you want to stay, if you're, you know, really studying hard and, and don't want to leave your residence hall area to, to go get food, one of our Starship robots can bring it directly to you. I myself have a dining plan. I find it super convenient just working on campus. Um, Lots of different meal plans, depending on what your dietary needs are. Um, all of that we take into account. So the options are really quite limitless. Corbin's going to tell you a little bit about his favorite eating spots on campus. Let's take a listen. Hey, everyone. I'm Corbin, just outside of our university union, where a lot of different dining options are here for students. Here at NAU, we've got 27 different dining options, ranging from Chick-fil-A and Denny's, to Einstein Bros Bagels and Jamba Juice and anything in between, a student can find their liking here on campus. My personal favorite is called The Green Scene. It's on the third floor of the HLC. So once you're here at NAU, definitely come check it out. Thank you, Corbin. Next up, we wanna talk about transportation. I know parents and students alike are always interested in how the students are gonna get around campus, how they're gonna to get to and from campus. Uh, we have a very bicycle friendly campus a very pedestrian friendly campus as well. Additionally, we do have our bus system uh, here on campus that we've got loops going in both directions. So uh, you can hop on a bus uh, all over campus and it'll take you to all the other parts of campus. We also have our city bus line that runs through campus. And with your student ID, you can hop on those city buses uh, that come through campus for free. Uh, as far as getting to and from Flagstaff, uh, there are some private companies that offer shuttles down to the Phoenix and the Phoenix airport. Um, there's also the Flix bus that will go all the way down to Tucson, um, as well as out to California and some other cities. So those are some ways to get around on the ground. As far as through the air, uh, we do have an airport here in Flagstaff. And currently the direct flights out of Flagstaff, you can connect down to Phoenix and then uh, connect from there. You can go to, direct to Denver, Colorado, and then also Dallas, Texas are the three options uh, that we currently have out of the Flagstaff Airport um, that can help get you to and from home for those of you joining us uh, from out of state, those can be some options. Next is campus safety, a key component. We talked about some pandemic safety measures that we took at the beginning of our time together, but these are other safety measures that we've taken into account, whether we're in a pandemic or not, although many of them have come in quite handy during this time. One of the things is the NAU Safe app. And in that app, students can request a safety escort if they're um, working late at the library and aren't totally comfortable walking across campus in the evening. We also publish our, our clear report on our NAU Police Department website, an accredited police department. And oftentimes you'll see that police department um, talking with students about making sure they're keeping their residence hall safe, not prep, propping doors open and, and making sure they're not leaving their laptop, you know, in the middle of the library while they head across the street to go get food and those types of things. All in all, and I think you'll hear from our students, a, a safe campus and that they feel safe on campus. Next up, diversity and inclusion. Definitely, and no matter how you identify or where you come from, 
we want to make sure you find a home here on our campus. And, and our team in the diversity and inclusion area helps do that. Whether you're a first generation um, student or you're a student or military, a student veteran or military affiliated. Our disability resources has been a great um, resource for even faculty, staff, and our students. And by far one of my very favorite places on campus is our Native American Cultural Center. We're in such a, a, a unique area in the Southwest. And if you know nothing about indigenous populations, please make a point to go to the Native American Cultural Center, ask a questions, read some of the things that are up in that center. And, and maybe you'll even have a class there or, or a meeting there, just a great hub of activity here on campus. And certainly, I like to always call out our uh, dedication to first-generation college yes. students. A uh, high percentage of our students do identify as first-generation. Um, it's an identity I actually have as well, too. Um, and I'm really thankful for the effort NAU puts in uh, to help students that are first-generation and the first in their families uh, to pursue a college degree. So another part of the social fit is certainly clubs and activities. Uh, over 400 clubs and organizations here on campus, and that number seems to grow every single year as new clubs, new interests uh, continually get added. Pretty much everything you could possibly think of. If you happen to not find a club or org uh, of interest to you, uh, you and a few of your classmates and a faculty or staff uh, mentor can create a new one, and that's why that number keeps uh, increasing each year. Fraternity and sorority life uh, is available for students that are interested in that. ASNIU is our student government, so maybe you're involved with student government in high school and want to continue that passion. And then lots of entertainment options here as well. Uh, we've got uh, different bands and artists and speakers, uh, all, all kinds of things that come through campus and you have that opportunity to, to learn more about um, and most of them are free or reduced cost uh, to students to be able to attend. And, and certainly those have all continued, even though we're in kind of a, a socially, physically distanced world at the moment. Students have found amazing creative ways, whether it's a TikTok battle or, or connecting on Zoom or virtual concerts, all ha have happened here in, in the last handful of months. So tons of creativity and still um, students finding some really meaningful ways um, to connect with each other. Absolutely. So next up, NAU Athletics. Uh, we are NCAA Division I with our athletics programs. We compete in the Big Sky Conference for most of our teams. Uh, the exception being our women swimming and diving that competes in the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference. Uh, we're at 7,000 feet elevation, so really strong in those distance and endurance uh, type sports. Uh, swimming and diving has won the last seven WAC titles. And a huge point of pride for us is our men's cross country team uh, who recently won three straight national titles. So we wanna hear from one of our student athletes though. So I'm gonna throw it over to DJ. It's all the classes, it's all the practices. I mean, there's so many points where I, I, really, I really wanted to give up. You know, it was so hard. I just constantly remember my parents saying, if it's, if it's too easy, you know, you're not going to get anything out of it. I can attribute 100% of my success to my parents. Well, my father and I, we both blood, sweat, and tears on the same field. Without NAU, I don't think that I would have the opportunities that I could have in the future. It's really built me and molded me into to what I am now. My name is DJ Arnson. I'm a biomedical science major and chemistry minor, and I'm a lumberjack. So Chad mentioned we talked about the academic fit and we talked about the social fit. And next is a favorite of parents typically. How about the cost and the cost of attendance? And, and how can we make that work given our, our family's situation? We know predictability of cost is critical. So what you see listed on your screen is how we calculate what we call cost of attendance. So that includes the, the tuition rates and whether you're an Arizona student or a non-resident or a WUI student, I'm gonna be covering what that is in just a minute. There you see your tuition right there. We also know that there are additional costs from books and supplies, certainly the meal plan and living, 
but also also fees. And some of those can vary depending on your courses. Some lab courses may have additional fees for lab supplies and those types of things. But we try to estimate a total cost of attendance when we're building your financial aid package. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Now, I mentioned that WUE rate, or W-U-E, and that stands for Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. So if you reside in one of the territories or states that are highlighted in yellow on the screen, once you're admitted, you're automatically put at that WUE tuition rate, which you also see on this screen. There's no additional application or, or, or anything you need to do. It's based on once you're admitted to the institution, to NAU, we're going to put you in that tuition rate automatically. Now, I know when working with parents and, and having um, a, a college first-year student myself next year, cost is critical. And, and offsetting some of those costs with some merit and scholarship options is also critical. So I'm going to turn it over to Chad to talk through how we manage that here. Yeah, so jumping into scholarships, and we're going to start with our top award for our Arizona residents, um, our Lumberjack Scholars Award. And with that, we're looking at a 3.5 and above core GPA, nothing lower than a B in any of the 16 core courses. And we'll touch on what the 16 core courses are um, in a moment here as we talk about admissions criteria and no deficiencies in any of those 16 core courses. And you can see the value there. And these are um, for our incoming students for uh, fall 2021. These would be the, the requirements. You can get a sense of what uh, the amount is for those students. Additionally, some other scholarships uh, for our Arizona residents for that WUI group we touched on, and then our non-residents. Uh, these are some additional scholarships. And these are also going to be core GPAs, unweighted. Um, of those 16 core classes. And you can see a, a breakdown there and Mike could be able to get a sense looking at the screen um, of where you will fall. Any of these awards, I should say, you will automatically be evaluated for those uh, when you apply for admissions uh, here at NAU. So let's talk about those core courses. Here at Northern Arizona University, we take your coursework from high school and we break it down into these areas and in, in whether they're in progress if you're a senior or if you're applying at the end of your junior year, we know that you'll be taking that fourth year of English or that fourth year of math. We also require three years of lab science, two years of social science, with one of those being US or American history, two years of a second language, and I will say American Sign Language does count in that category as well, and one year of a fine art or a CTE or career and technical education course. Those are the 16 core courses that we then calculate your GPA to, to, to map to those scholarship um, bands that we, that we saw on the previous screen. All of that is available for you online as well. And certainly the pandemic has changed the way students are taking standardized tests. For years, we, have, we haven't required a standardized test. Our scholarships or for admissions, you do not need to have an ACT or an SAT test. They are optional and certainly can help you um, with some placement into an English class. Or, as Chad mentioned, if you are deficient in one of those years, let's say you only took three years of math, but scored really high on one of those tests, you could offset that deficiency with that test score. So if you have it, send it, but absolutely not required. So if you're a college, if, if you're a high school senior and have already applied and been admitted, and you think that NAU is the right fit for you, the next steps would be to pay your enrollment deposit and secure your spot in the fall 2021 class. If you're a junior or sophomore and doing some early college search, we love that. You know those college core, you know those 16 core courses we'll be looking at, and you can apply in the July before your senior year, as early as that. But for you seniors, after that deposit, you'll want to apply for housing if you're going to join us here on campus, and then also complete priority enrollment. That priority enrollment profile, you'll share any AP classes you've taken, any recent coursework, maybe you've changed your major since when you applied, all of that will be shared in that priority enrollment profile that your academic advisor will take and build your first and even your second um, term courses out for you and start building that schedule. 
will also want you, will we'll register you for orientation um, in May. And then you'll want to send that final high school transcript and those immunization records, which is pretty standard operating procedure, no matter where you choose to go. We certainly hope you jo join us here in, in lumberjack country though. Before we sign off, I did want to show you this awesome video that our team in advancement to put together, highlighting some of our given day, giving day and our students, faculty and staff working together. Let's take a look. Go Jack! This is Northern Arizona University. It's the one with the mountain, the pines, the dome, the lumberjacks. It's the one on the mother road with a hundred years of tradition, which looks like this, that, or this. A unique place where you can learn here or here. It's really beautiful, I love it. It's a community that cares. Because that's what lumberjacks are. See, NAU helps people who can look at microorganisms and see global impacts. People who understand helping one person walk moves us all forward, that opportunity it's the only thing that can limit achievement. Lumberjacks stand together, passing traditions onto the next generation, sharing the stuff we love, the moments we remember. It's the pride that shapes the university, that shapes us. This is Northern Arizona University. We are proud, we are loyal, we are Lumberjacks. Thanks, Chad and Annika. My name is Danny Donaldson, and I work as an Associate Director of Admissions here at Northern Arizona University. I'm from the city of Flagstaff, a two-time NAU alumna, and my pronouns are she, her. As promised, we are here with a couple of NAU students to talk about what life on campus is like. And so right now, I'd like to have our students introduce themselves. Bailey, we'll start with you. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Bailey. I am currently a junior here at NAU and I'm originally from Peoria, Arizona. I'm a biomedical sciences major with minors in chemistry and Spanish. And I'm also in the Honors College if anyone has any questions about that. And my pronouns are he, him, and his. Fantastic. How about Stache? Hi everyone. My name is Stache. I am a music education major here at NAU. I am originally from Wendell, Arizona. I'm currently a junior, and my pronouns are she and hers. Fantastic, welcome, thank you so much. We've had a number of students submit some questions to admissions at nau.edu, and so without further ado, let's take some time to answer those questions. The first one is, why did you choose NAU? Bailey, go ahead. All right, so I think the main reason why I decided to come to NAU was primarily for the weather. Um, growing up in central Phoenix, there when it's like winter, the cacti turn from like green to brown and we're like, yay, time to wear hoodies in 70 degree weather. And so uh, it was a big adjustment coming here, but I definitely wanted to see the leaves change and see snow for the first time and everything like that. Uh, and then on top of that as well, it was like far enough away from home that I still felt independent. Uh, but close enough that if I needed, you know, help with my laundry or anything like that, I could still go back home for that. So that's why I chose NAU. Definitely some good reasons. What about you, Stache? Why did you choose NAU? Yeah, I came from my smaller high school, so NAU was a perfect fit. It was small enough, but big enough in my comfort zone. I'm also a lumberjack scholar, so having that scholarship come was a big help when it came to school. And NU has a really big diversity, so I was able to just feel comfortable in my own skin here. I love that, I love that. Some really good information about uh, the NAU campus community being a reason to choose NAU, some scholarship opportunities as well, and even our academic programs that we have to offer. Now I'm looking here down at my phone, I've got a couple more questions to ask you all. Um, as students here at the university, how have you gotten involved with the NAU community? Stash, why don't we start with you? <laughs> yeah, so um, as a music education major, I was able to be involved with ASTA, which is American Strings Teachers Association. And with that, we were able to learn uh, different ways on how to teach a um, orchestra and just go to a bunch of conferences, which is amazing. 
I'm also involved in um, first gen because I am a first generation student. And my first year, all they did was help out with um, just getting comfortable with being a first generation student and just making sure that like I'm okay. Um, so that was a really big help as well. Awesome. Bailey, what about you as a biomed major? What types of activities do you have time for? Yeah, so um, first of all, we have this job that we're currently working, and it's been a great chance to meet other people, kind of branch out and get involved uh, in not only the NAU community, but also the Flagstaff community, and so uh, that's a pretty sweet gig. Uh, on top of that as well, I'm also involved in the pre-med club here on campus, um, and they do a really good job of making sure that I have all of the knowledge and information that I need uh, in terms of what comes after college as well, which has been incredibly helpful knowing how to succeed on the MCAT and apply to different medical schools and everything like that. Uh, and then finally, I've been really into uh, our intramural sports that we offer here. For me, that's been a great way to kind of get out of the classroom setting and take a break from my homework and kind of just relieve some of that stress that I'm feeling during the semester. Uh, and so what's great about our intramural sports is that it's just a small fee. You can play any sport that we offer during a semester. Um, of course, this was um, has been changed a little bit because of COVID and everything like that. But I have still been able to get involved. I have still been able to get outside uh, of my room and kind of engage a little bit in the NAU community. And that's been a great help. Great, yes. So as our students mentioned, um, a number of ways to get involved on campus, whether that is through academic clubs on campus, intramural sports. I know that we have a fraternity and sorority life here on campus as well. Um, Bailey, if a student is interested to learn about the ways in which they can get involved on campus, what's a good resource that you might recommend? Yeah, I would say primarily the best uh, option that we offer in terms of getting plugged in uh, to all of our different clubs and organizations would be to visit True Blue Connects. Uh, that's a website that we offer that houses all of our, you know, clubs and organizations. You can get a brief description, the contact information for anybody in that club and kind of help you get plugged in as quickly as possible. And so even if those clubs and organizations are meeting online during this time, uh, you can still find the best way to get involved and kind of take a break from your classes. Awesome. Thanks for putting that information out there. This next question um, is certainly one that we get having students come from both in and out of state to attend NAU. So what type of transportation is available to travel back home? Um, do you need to have a car on campus? Stacia, we'll start with you again. Yeah, so different types of transportation that we offer is that uh, um, if you want to go to back to, say, Phoenix, um, there is a shuttle that is from NAU and will take you to Phoenix or the Phoenix airport. And I have a bunch of friends that have utilized that and it is very cheap. So I just having that option has been really great, especially for those that live in the Valley and those that are from out of state and need to go to the airport. So that is a really great useful resources. What about you, Bailey? What are your thoughts? Do students need to have a car on campus in order to get around? Um, as somebody that had a car uh, my first year coming in to NAU, uh, the main reason why I used it was definitely to get up and down from my place uh, down in Peoria. And so I would definitely say that it's more of a luxury than a necessity. I think that NAU offers a ton of different uh, programs and resources for students to be able to get, you know, from uh, up here to home, whether that's in a different state or in state. Uh, a couple of other resources that we have for getting off of campus and going home. Uh, we also do have the Flagstaff Airport, which can at times have connecting flights to the Phoenix Airport and then being able to get you successfully back home. And then on top of that as well, if you do need to get down to the Phoenix Airport but don't want to utilize the shuttle, uh, we also do offer what we call a rideshare program. Basically, it's a little Facebook page that you can go on to. Uh, and once you're on that page, you can post, hey, I'm going to Phoenix, would anybody like a ride? Just bring gas money or some snacks uh, and I'll go ahead and take you down to the airport. And so that's another great way to also meet new students and other people on campus on top of the fact that you're also getting that ride. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend those resources as well. I think that's a really good point that you made there, Bailey, and that having a car on campus is more of a luxury, but you do have a lot of options um, for getting to and from Flagstaff, including that uh, groom transportation, I think is what you're referring to, Stache. Um, so fantastic. 
all of our parking rate information can be found on the NAU parking uh, website as well. Um, any student is allowed to bring a car to campus. Um, so that is good information to have. Going through my list here. Ooh, this is a fun question. And uh, Bailey, we'll start with you. What is something that you are absolutely glad to have brought to campus and something you learned later on that you didn't actually need at all? I would say for me, at least one of the things that I was the most happy to have on campus was definitely my Keurig. Um, I'm more coffee than I am blood or water at this point. Uh, and so having something that can make me coffee every single morning was really great. Um, on top of that, though, one thing that I found out that I really didn't need was also the Keurig. So that's kind of uh, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, the reason why I say that I didn't need the Keurig at all was just because of how many options that we have here on campus when it comes to food and specifically coffee. Um, that being said, we do a great job with our meal plans. And as a first year student, you are required to have a meal plan on campus. And so knowing that there are all those different options for coffee and other different types of food, uh, I kind of realized that all I really needed was the food and uh, resources provided on campus, and I didn't even need to bring the Keurig in the first place. But I am still glad that I brought it because uh, coffee's coffee, you know? <laughs> coffee definitely runs through my veins as well. Um, and I do want to just make a point of clarification that if a student is living on campus, they are required to have a meal plan. Um, but if you're living off campus, you do have that option to purchase a meal plan should you choose to. So Stace, what about you? From your perspective, what's one thing you are glad to have brought to campus and one thing you probably could have done without? Yeah, so I am so happy that I brought snow boots and a bunch of snow clothes because it does snow and flag, which people don't expect because it is Arizona. So having a good winter coat, a good um, pair of snow boots, um, just any type of warm clothing will really benefit you. Um, something that I found that actually did not benefit me more was having a lot of clothes because um, I just found that I didn't wear most of it and it was just, it was just there. So I would recommend not bringing too many clothes. <laughs> not too many clothes, but definitely you want to make sure that you have a winter jacket. That's a really good piece of advice. So we've talked a little bit about life on campus and things that you might need, coffees and jackets. Um, what about connecting with your professors? Um, this next question that we have here is, what's your advice for being successful in the classroom and how do students meet with their professors? Yeah, so I think I could take this one first. Um, I would say that my biggest tip for, you know, any student on campus in terms of academics would be just utilizing the resources that we offer that help students succeed academically. And so just to list a couple off, we offer supplemental instruction here on campus. Basically what those are are students that have taken a class before, were very successful in it, and then were hired by the university to once again sit in that same class but this time they're taking notes and everything like that so that they can hold study sessions that are free for the students in that class. Um, and so that's just one example um, of tutoring options that we have here on Canvas. The majority, actually all of our tutoring options are going to be completely free. If you're paying for tutoring, you're doing it wrong. Um, but that being said, it, it has shown, um, recent statistics at least, that students that do take advantage of the resources typically have a grade level higher than the students that don't. And so making sure that you're taking advantage of those resources and stuff like that definitely helps in uh, academics, and that usually includes going to your professor's office hours as well, so. Thanks, Bailey. Stace, any information that you would add in terms of being a successful student, connecting with your professors? Yeah, of course. Um, what helped me a lot is that I got a planner and wrote everything down, all of my due dates. It just helped with being organized as a student and making sure that I am just planning all of my time out, which is good time management. And with meeting with your professors, they will have a, um, a meeting time in the syllabi that will just tell you when you're able to meet with them. And if they, that time does not work, they will give the option to email them and work around your schedule. I love that. Yes, good information to connect with your professors, get a planner, um, attend supplemental instruction or tutoring as your schedules allow. Definitely some very helpful tips for doing well academically during your time here at NAU. 
Now this last question that we've got here, um, I think will resonate with a lot of folks who are watching. So for uh, incoming students, Stash, what is one piece of advice that you would give um, for being here on campus? Yeah, um, it might sound a little cliche, but just get involved and just, there's a bunch of Facebook groups and a bunch of like Instagram groups where they will meet with others, any students that are coming the next semester. And with those, you're able to meet a bunch of different people. Um, and this is very beneficial, especially for those who are coming from out of state and need to know at least one other person in um, NEU. So I found that that was really beneficial. All right, great. What about you, Bailey? For incoming students who are watching, what would you tell them? Piece of advice? I would say that my biggest piece of advice is on top of the time that you allot towards, you know, hanging with your friends or being involved, and on top of that as well, the time that you allot towards your class and your schoolwork, also, just take time to focus on yourself and just kind of take care of yourself. Um, I know that, I know for me at least, when I was a first year student, one of my biggest issues was always dealing with the stress and the anxiety that came along with some of that uh, schoolwork. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed, especially when you pack your schedule. Um, and so that being said, utilizing the resources that we have on campus, like for example, Pause Your Stress, which is spelled P-A-W-S and not P-A-U-S-E, uh, because we bring a bunch of support dogs in and students are free to pet them and kind of relieve some of that anxiety and stress. Taking advantage of resources like that uh, and making sure that you're sleeping well, getting a good diet and everything like that. All of those things will come together to make sure that you can be as successful in every other aspect of your life and every other aspect of you know, your college experience. And so that would be my number one tip is just make sure that you're taking care of yourself while you're in college on top of everything else that you're already doing. I think those two pieces of advice resonate regardless of whether you're an incoming student or wherever you are, um, taking time to get connected, but also making sure that you are taking time for yourself. Station Bailey, thank you so much for your time this afternoon, giving folks an insider's view as to what life as a lumberjack is like. I know as I'm looking here, we didn't get to all of the questions that had been submitted, but please feel free to reach out at admissions at nau.edu with your questions. We'll continue to get you connected to our True Blue ambassadors. And stay tuned, Chad and Annika will be right back with some closing remarks for our Discover NAU event. What we're trying to figure out is relationships between communities of microbes that live in mammal guts and Alzheimer's symptoms. Being able to possibly reduce patients and family suffering by learning more about the disease mechanisms would be tremendously satisfying. My name is Chris and I'm a lumberjack. So great always to hear from our students about their experience and answering your questions. Thank you for joining us for Discover NAU today and taking some time out of your day to learn a, bit, a little bit more. Chad's gonna share with you a couple different ways that our team would love to continue the conversation with you. Yeah, if you've got other questions, certainly continue to use that admissions email address, admissions at nau.edu, and we'll answer questions. If you want a, an appointment, either over Zoom, on the phone, um, we, we're able to set that up too. Um, you could use that email address, or we even have a specific email address for that, admissions.appointment at nau.edu. And we're happy to sit down and answer any questions that might be uh, more personal to you or your family or anything really that would help you navigate uh, this process. Excellent. Thanks again for joining us and go Lumberjacks. Go Lumberjacks. <laughs>